In today's video, I wanted to give a brief overview of using the Google Notebook LM AI tool. I recently was introduced to it when I attended a GAD event. So GAD being the Global Accessibility Awareness Day on Thursday. They asked about what tools do you think will be trending soon in this space? And one panelist said the Google Notebook. And so if you're not familiar with it, it's basically the new AI tool where you can create notebooks and then you can add your own sources to it. And then when you ask questions similar to ChatGPT, it uses those sources specifically to get the answers, not any source that has been fed into the AI. So I thought I'd give a quick like how to use the basic features of this tool in case you're an educator considering using it for your own teaching or research, whatever the case may be. Um, if you're considering how students might, students might bring it into the classroom and you wanna make sure that you can have a discussion about it because you know how it works, this video is for you. As a starting point, here is the main page that you go to in order to start getting into the notebook. So it's just notebooklm.google. And then you click try notebook and it'll take you to the notebook page. I'm gonna go ahead and open it up the one I already have here. So on the bottom left, there's introduction to the notebook LM. If you click that one, it will take you to the one that they've built that gives you a lot of information about how to use the tool. So I've only taken a brief look. So again, I'm not an expert, but just for the basics, if you wanna just take a look at it. Before I show you the example notebook I created, let's just start from scratch in case you wanna know like what's the step-by-step -step of creating a notebook. So you click new notebook, and then you go ahead and give it a name. So for example, maybe it's gonna be a notebook attached to a certain course you teach. So I'll just call it that for now. On the left-hand side, this is a list of sources that you'll create. And the sources that you add to the notebook is what the notebook uses to answer the questions you ask. If you click the plus sign, here are the types of documents that you can add at the moment. So you can add a Google Drive document, a PDF, a text file, or you can just click here and you can just give it a title and paste text into it and use that as a source instead. They do have suggestions if you read through the notebook introduction of what to do if you are doing this one in particular. So for example, if you are adding in quotes because you might want to use it later on, they suggest making sure you always have the name of the author, the text where it came from, and the page number if applicable in each paragraph so it's easy for the notebook to know exactly who said what quote but that's again more more in depth here so basics you click the plus sign and you add what you want they recommend that it's easily formatted so basically just text not images videos etc columns things that could complicate the notebook being able to read the text in the source you want to stay away from that so you click the one you want and then you add sources to it I believe there's a limit to the number of sources you can use in a particular notebook. I think it's 20. I'm not sure, but I think it is. But that's on the left here. And then on right next to it, the add note. So there's multiple ways of creating notes in a notebook. One is to just click add note and creating one. So you can go ahead and say, all right, I want to add the title. And it's maybe ideas for my blog. And then you just, you know, create a little list here if you want and you type out things, right? So that's one approach, and then that note is ready to be used. You can click into it, edit it as you need to, because it's one that you created yourself. You can also select on the top right and delete the note if it's no longer needed. So that's one option here. On the top right, you can share the notebook with others using the Gmail account, but we won't be doing that here. So that's the basics of how the tool is used. You add in the sources, and then you ask questions about the topic at hand and it will answer based off of the sources that you've added. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back and show you the one that I created as my example here. So what I have here is a notebook about OER or Open Educational Resources. I have videos about OER, so I'm not gonna go into much detail, but basically there are websites where you can go ahead and go say, oh, I want a resource on X, and then it will share resources that are openly available for your use. They have different licensing types. It depends on the resource. You always want to check that out. So in this case, I create a notebook about 
creating ODR. It's something that I have on my bucket list of things I want to do, create some. So I figured, you know what, let's see what they have to say, what advice I can get, tips and etc. So I went into OER Commons. I asked, hey, search for creating OER as the topic. Then I went to license types and I said, I want ones that are unrestricted use. So that means these sources are either in the public domain or they have a Creative Commons, which is usually like attribution. In the case of the ones I chose, the only thing I have to do if I use the source is to have an attribution to it. So I know I'm in the clear when using these resources. And then I found the ones I wanted I, and I added four to the source list. So again, I did that plus sign, PDF, and added them. And so that's here what I have on the left. And then you see the blue here, the check marks. So I have select all sources. So when I ask a question, all four sources will be used to get the answer. If I want to though, I say, okay, maybe I only want to know what the faculty OER toolkit has to say about this one. So you see that when I clicked it, it gave me things to consider, like maybe you want to ask these questions based off of what the notebook is reading in the source. But I want all four to be used here, okay? And then you see I have a note here. This is a saved note, right? It's a saved response. If I click into here, I cannot edit it, right? They're view only because it came from the notebook. I didn't write this. And so let's go and look at my history here, right? Because I did some experimenting. So if you click the little open chat, It'll show you the history of everything you've asked the notebook, which is great, obviously. So the first thing I asked are, what are the benefits, main benefits of creating OER? And it told me this. Here, here's some main benefits. You click 10 citations and you click, let's say, number five, and I'll go to that portion of the source that was used as inspiration for this answer. If I go to nine, it goes down to this source, etc. If I want to, I'm like, oh, this is a great answer. I want to remember this. I want to have easy access to it. I can pin it and it's pinned to that main page, like what you saw with the one that's view only. That's because I pinned it, but I'm not going to pin this one. If I want to, I can copy it to a clipboard and paste it into a document to use elsewhere. I can say, hey, this is a great response or this is a bad response, depending on what's here as well. So I asked that first. Then I asked, what are the main challenges of creating OER? And so it gave me some challenges here. What are the considerations for evaluating OER? And it gave me this here as well. So this is the one that I went ahead and pinned onto my, my dashboard. Okay. Then I went to how do I get started in creating OER? And so what is really interesting is, you know, it really seems to do a good job here. For example, this one, it says, you know, they have a lot of information about OER in these sources, but they don't have a step-by-step -step guide because they emphasize that it's a chaotic process that varies from project to project, right? It's an iterative and adaptive endeavor. But they still have some key insights and practical tips. And all these are great tips to have um, about creating OER, right? So now I thought, let's get a little creative because this is just getting facts from these four sources. But let me ask the notebook to do something now, right? So create a podcast episode outline about how to create OER with your students, okay? Because maybe you're doing a podcast episode for fellow teachers. And then it gave me this outline. It gave me a title to potentially use, who my target audience is, the episode summary, and then a breakdown, right, the actual outline, the introduction, segment one, two, three, four, and five, the conclusion, and even a call to action, right? Invite listeners to share their own experiences with open pedagogy or ask questions. So there's definitely the fact-based ones. Hey, what are the considerations, right? How do I consider the challenges, et cetera, et cetera, that they got from the sources? But then you could ask it to do things, right? So create a podcast episode outline. Maybe I asked, hey, you know, create a blog post about OER licensing concerns. And here we go. So OER licensing concerns, a deep dive. Understanding copyright, open licenses, the heart of OER, creative commons, navigating the options, concerns and considerations, navigating licensing challenges, and conclusion. So in my, in my opinion, a bit short of a blog post, it's not a deep dive really. This seems to be more of a, basics, a basic dive, um, a shallow dive into licensing concerns, but it's a starting point, right? And you can just build off it as you go. 
So then let's say we're gonna go ahead and ask a question that is being offered like as a potential one. So I'm gonna say, what are the three open licenses besides Creative Commons? So each time you click one of their questions, more of them will pop up as suggestions. So now rather than saying a question here, there's still a question, but they also had the potential for creating something, right? It was explained, it was outlined, right? It was draft. So there are plenty of options here to choose from. So I'm gonna go ahead and for example, I already have the evaluating OER saved, but I'm gonna go ahead and pin this one too. So now I have both pinned here. And if I want to, I can select them and then ask a question tied to the notes rather than tied to the sources, right? Um, I can also combine it to a note, one note rather than two notes. We can create a study guide, create an outline, summarize, all this kind of stuff, right? So you can also use the notes as the starting point rather than the sources. So obviously these are two very short notes, but let's say we create study guide. All right, go ahead and open it up. So again, it's view only because they created it. So study guide, getting started with OR, OER creation. Central questions to review. Why curate? How does the inner nature of influence the process? And so on and so forth. Glossary of key terms and ideas. So questions and definitions based off of those two notes. And to finish off this little quick, you know, overview of this tool, one thing I didn't show in the beginning, if you click the sources, they automatically create a summary of the source at the top and key topics as well. And then below it is the actual source, all the content they can read through. But it generates the summary each time. So if you open up this one, here's a summary of this one. They emphasize certain elements of it, right? And key topics as well. So if you click here, students, right? Discuss students tied to this source. And it will answer that question as well. If you found this video helpful, click like and let me know. If you have anything you'd want me to explore in a future video about this tool, go ahead and let me know in the comment section so I can write that down for a future video. And subscribe if you don't want to miss out on future content. Usually I share teaching tips, ideas, resources for college instructors, the occasional ed tech tutorial, and also just advice more generally if you're in academia or an alt-act career. I'll see you next time.